Your first, the first question I want to take a look at here is 3.101. It is the four meter long beam we have from A through H of different loading types. Um, and we need to replace each with an equivalent force couple system at the end A of the beam. Our moments add, just like forces add together, moments will also add together. Um, forces will create moments. So that's something that we need to take into consideration. But let's take a look at the first one. So no matter what, the first thing I'm going to do in my approach to these questions, I want an equivalent force couple system. If we take the couple part of it, if we take the moment part of it out, having an equivalent force, what would be required to have an equivalent force? You need the summation of forces in X to be equal to zero, and the summation of forces in Y to be equal to zero, assuming we're in 2D, which we are. Um, I see no X forces. I only see Y forces. So the first thing I'm going to do is my summation of forces in. So saying they need to be equal to zero. That was me going back to equilibrium brain. We're not in equilibrium in this question because of these, these supports, these pieces here, right? Those are adding a reaction that we're not considering. That's one of the things we'll add um, with our rigid body assessment. So it's basically like the next section slash we've already started it. Um, but summation of forces in Y is our 400 newtons plus our 200 newtons. Or you could say negative 400 minus 200. They're both going in the negative Y direction. So our resultant force is 600 newtons. That's going to be applied at A as per problem. Our summation of moments at A. We have our original moment our moment due to a couple, then that is going to be still there, that 1800 Newton meters in the counterclockwise direction. When we look at A, the force applied at A is not going to have a moment impact, right? We're moving, so basically to get the 600 Newtons here, we need to move this 200 Newtons down this way. In order to do that, we would need to account for the moment that that's gonna cause. So if we were fixed at A, Applying 200 newtons will cause a clockwise rotation at point B. The negative force will cause clockwise rotation. So we're going to do 4 times 200 to get the magnitude of the moment this force will create relative to point A. That force, the moment from the 200 newton force is going to oppose this 1800 newton meter force. And so we're going to have our 1800 newton meters minus that 800 newton meters to get an equivalent force of 1,000 Newton meters. And that's gonna be going again in the counterclockwise direction, the same as our original force in the problem. So this series of questions goes through similar. In this one, we already have our, our force at A, um, our 600 Newtons at A. We have this moment down here. What do we have to do? This moment is, when we say moments, just kind of floating like that rotational thing, we're assuming that they're couples and that we can then free move them around. And so we're able to move that 900 here. So the equivalent force couple system will be the negative 600 and the 900 right here. So really your new drawing will look something like this, right? With this being the 900 and your original being uh, the same, your original force still being there. Okay. Um. This next one, so we have our positive 300 newtons. We'll start with our summation of forces in Y. Positive 300 newtons, negative 900 newtons. So we're going to have a negative 600 net force. Um, we have our rotational force. Our 300 newtons is not moving. Our 900 is. So we're having 900 newtons that would oppose the rotation of this. 900 times 4 is the perpendicular distance. Force times distance, 900 times 4. We're subtracting because we are countering that motion. We end up with 900 in the clockwise direction. So same thing we would expect a negative 600 and a 900. Okay. D, we have a 400 Newton force, a positive 800 Newton force. So we're gonna have a net positive 400 Newton force. 400 newtons in the positive y direction applied at A. We have our original 2,300 newton meters. We're posing that. So this 2,300 is going in the clockwise direction. Our 800 is opposing. 
800 times four, that's our positive moment because it would cause counterclockwise rotation. Clockwise is negative, and so we have a net positive 900 Newton meters. This next one, E, I think we have three more after this. Um, so we have a negative 400 and a negative 200 total. That's gonna bring us to negative 600. This should be a negative, that arrow's upside down right here. Um, we have a 200 Newton meter and a 400 Newton meter moments from couples that we wanna add directly together. The other force that we're moving is what we're gonna to have to account for in that shift in our moment to get our equivalent force moment system. So our 200 and our 400 are both going counterclockwise. So they're both positive. Our 200 would cause a counterclockwise motion. If we were fixed at this, this A point and apply the 200, this would swing counterclockwise, assuming those fixtures aren't there. I'm sorry, swing clockwise. So we're gonna subtract our 200 Newtons times our four Newton meters force times perpendicular distance, and we end up with a negative 200 Newton meters or 200 Newton meters in the clockwise direction. For this next one, again, so these two moments now are, are countering each other. So 300 minus 300, we have zero moment to add there. Our summation of forces, we have the negative 800 plus 200. So that brings us to positive six, I'm sorry, negative 600. Um, this 200 Newton force needs to move because these two count cancel each other out. That's the only thing we need to account for is our 200 Newtons times our four Newton meters. Our final answer is, um, our equivalent force couple system at A would be a negative 600 Newton force and a positive 800 Newton meter moment. For G, we have these two moments adding together. They're going in complementary directions, both going counterclockwise. So we have a 4,200 Newton meter moment. Our summation of force without accounting for the linear forces and their impact on the moment, the movement, right? Um, so we have our summation of forces in Y, 200, negative 200 Newtons and negative 800 Newtons. Together, we have negative 1,000 Newtons. If we wanna put that negative 1,000 Newtons at point A, we have to move this 800. We also wanna account for the moment. So we wanna account for these moments here. So we have our positive 4,200 Newton meters. This would resist that type of rotation. So 800 times four, and that gives us a thousand Newton meters in the counterclockwise direction or in our, our conventional, in our notation, uh, positive, positive 1000 Newton meters. Our last one here, we have countering or posing moments here. We have our 2,400 Newton meters going counterclockwise and our 300 Newton meters going clockwise. So 2,400 minus 300, we'll have to account for the movement of this force. So we'll have to multiply this 300 newtons by the four meters, and that would cause a clockwise rotation. So that's gonna have negative value as well. So we're gonna end up with four, 2,400 newton meters minus 300 minus 300 times four. And that's gonna bring us 900 newton meters in the counterclockwise direction. The next question we're gonna move on to is 3.105. So we have two children sitting on ends A and B of a seesaw. We have the weight of each child. We want to figure out where we can put a third child so that the resultant of the weights of the three children will pass through C. That means that at C, the summation of moments is equal to zero. We have two different weights for this third child, giving us two different problems to solve for. We'll start with our free body diagram. So logicking it out, if child A is 68 pounds and child B is 48 pounds, and they're both equal distances apart, we know the moment from child A is gonna be larger. They have equal distances, the magnitude of force is larger, and therefore the moment will be larger. So we know, or we could logic out that 
the additional, the third child should be closer on the side of the lighter child um, or child B. So we can figure out how far from C we want that child by adding that, that distance element. Um, two ways we could do it is either summation of moments is equal to zero so that if we were to do summation of moments are equal to zero based on point C, um, this child at A would cause a counterclockwise rotation. So that would be positive. So his weight 68 times six, um, anything on this side would cause a clockwise rotation. So that would be negative. Set all of that equal to zero because we are in equilibrium. So the moment from A, minus the moment from C minus the moment from B equals zero. The other thing is a, a moment balance. So either way it is a moment balance, but um, the other one would be taking anything. So since all of our forces are going in the same direction, if we take everything on this side and we, let's, let's not say that, we'll say we'll take all of our counterclockwise moments on one side of an equal side, all of our clockwise rotation moments on the other side, and they should cancel each other out. Um, so in that case, you could say the moment of A equals the moment of C plus B, the moment of C. Um, same thing, just are we set, what side of the equation are these terms on? So let's go in with our first scenario. We are going to do our summation of moments is equal to zero. Moment is equal to a force times the perpendicular distance. We have um a positive moment of 68 times 6 68 pounds times 6 feet um of child a minus so a negative moment of let's go with child b first 48 pounds times the 6 feet distance and then our third child we were given the weight of 52 let's determine the distance of that the other way would be to to balance in that in that respect Either way, we come out with a position D 2.31 feet to the right of C. If we had assumed the wrong direction for C, what we would have done is basically had a positive here. And we would have gotten a negative value for C making, I'm sorry, for D, showing us that we had assumed the wrong thing and it's actually on the other side. So if you got a negative value, that's what that means. Whatever side you assumed, you assumed wrong. For the next part, we'll follow exactly the same type of procedure. Summation of moments is equal to zero. Our moment is equal to our force times our perpendicular distance. The force times the force is perpendicular distance. For this problem, we're going to have zero equals the weight of child A from the, times the distance of child A from C. So 68 times 6 minus the moment of child B would be the weight of child B times the distance of 6. So 48 times 6 minus our new weight for child C is 44 pounds, and we are looking for the perpendicular distance, giving us one variable to solve for in one equation. We could also expect to see something like this. And either way, when you solve it, you get 2.73 feet. The child C is 2.73 feet away to the right of C.